Hey Slavic Vikings and welcome to Understanding Polish Mentality. This video is going to be full of anecdotes and personal experiences of living in Poland. My dad is fully raised and lived most of his life in Denmark and I was also born in Denmark and I also lived a bit in Ireland so my mentality is pretty close with Danish culture mentality because I was brought up by a Danish dad. So it's easier for me to notice differences that I will be talking about in this video. Before we get into the Polish mentality, let's talk a bit about Polish history. So the golden age of Poland was the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, where Poland, even though it was officially a monarchy, was one of the most democratic and tolerant countries in the world. It had one of the most, one of the biggest amount of Jews in the world. This all started to destroy with the partitions and the introduction of Liberum Veto in Poland, where it started slowly to ruin democracy in Poland and other neighboring powerful countries started to slowly destroy Poland because of how easy it, its borders are to invade. So like I said, Poland was destroyed and got its independence back many times and the last time was after World War II when Germany lost to the Allies and Poland got a bit of land. But because Russia also in a way won the war, they got Poland as a satellite state. And basically the goal of Russia in creating Poland was to create a buffer state between the uh, NATO countries and Russia so it would be way harder to invade Russia. They would first have to go through Poland and then they of course created a country from nowhere called Belarus. And as you probably know, after World War II, Russia and all of its, or should I say the Soviet Union, and all of its satellite states were communist. And Poland was communist for many many years and this shaped Polish mentality and Polish industry and Polish economy extremely and the fight against communism in the last couple of decades has created nationalism that is very unheard of in neighboring countries. Poland has been the victim so many times from global superpowers that Poland has basically the upper ground when it comes to morality in being extreme nationalists. Like for example, it is way less common to show a German flag, the biggest uh, Polish neighbor, than in Poland it is to show a Polish flag. Everyone shows a Polish flag in Poland because the Germans have a lot of guilt politically and individually because of what they did in the past while Poland was always the victim, just trying their best to survive. And this impacted Polish politics and mentality extremely in the last couple of years. So because Poland is fully independent now, there are a lot of radical nationalistic movements, and that is often how Poland is viewed by Western media. Like, for example, the Marsz Niepodległości, where Thousands and thousands of people go on the streets to celebrate the independence of Poland with, I could call it, very big passion. And this is a controversial topic in Poland and around the world because they often do stuff that is very controversial like burning flags of other countries and destroying public stuff for no reason. Now I'm going to talk about the second biggest impact on Polish mentality and that is the Catholic Church. With the fight of communism, there was the Polish Church, which was one of the only safe havens of free speech and sense of community when the communists were oppressing Polish culture. And because of that, Polish Catholicism is extremely big in Poland. It dictates rules, governments, and pretty much everything. Pol it's almost a meme in Poland now on how many churches there are. Like, 
every small village, small city has many churches in it. It's kind of crazy. These conservative ideas of far-right nationalism and far government Catholicism is looked with disgust from the west and inner cities like where I live in Warsaw. And this causes a big discourse between the Polish people. The government in Poland is favoring the majority of Poland, which is the conservative, religious, more rural parts of the population. Next up, we have Polish pathology. So all this torment of the Polish populace has caused a lot of pathology individually and on the legislative level. I can notice from my experience that when I travel to different countries, especially in Europe, people seem more normal. And I know that might sound weird, but let me explain. People in Poland usually are more closed off and they don't open up to you, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about radical personalities. This is from my experience and you might have a different one. I'm just explaining mine. And that is that many people in Poland have very far personalities, like specific personalities. For example, in Poland, you could find someone who is radically extroverted to the point where they can't stop talking and they want to be friends with everyone. And then the next person you meet might be extremely closed, extremely weird and like won't talk to anyone, etc, etc. But when I, for example, go to Denmark, people overall seem to have the, a similar type of personality when it comes to how weird they are. And I think this is caused by the lack of pathology in Denmark and in more developed countries because the giant torment because of Germany in World War II has caused so much destruction in families that it has stayed in generations of bringing up children. Individualism. Even though communism and its group ideology, Poland is pretty individual when it comes to personal relations compared to other European countries, like for example, Denmark. What do I mean by this? I mean this on the private level and on the government level again. Poland has a high preference of a loosely knit social framework in which individuals are expected to take care of themselves and their in immediate families only. In Poland, the average age of moving out is 26 compared to Scandinavian countries where I'm pretty sure it's 18. And that is because you stay with your family till you die in Poland. You're expected to help your family. Your family is the most important thing. And your kind of community is your family and you're supposed to all help each other. Compared to other countries, it's similar in all other Slavic countries, but compared to the West, that's not true. Of course, America is way more individual, but that's like hard to compare to. I'm mainly comparing to other European countries like Germany, Denmark, and Slovakia, Czechia, all the neighboring countries of Poland. When it comes to geopolitical issues, Poland can unite very easily. And statistically, Poland has been more productive and efficient when they unite against a common cause. This can be seen right now that Poland is trying to unite to be against the EU, even though that isn't really practical since the EU is helping Poland a lot. But without getting into too much politics, Poland tends to function worse when they don't have a common enemy that is not in the country. But Poland is also very capitalistic because of communism. They rejected communism to such a point, they radically started privatizing businesses to the point that Poland is one of the fastest developing 
rich countries in the world and it has survived many crises during the past decades. Now I'm gonna give a second anecdote and that is encounters with random neighbors and just random people on the road. Poland has a thing for ignoring the existence of a person unless it becomes relevant. When it becomes relevant, usually they are very welcoming and helpful. This is something that is totally op opposite in more, I would say, Mediterranean countries like Spain and Italy, where people, neighbors, they, they just say hi to each other and they greet each other and they have relationships even though they're not necessarily close or have opened up to each other. In Poland, when you meet someone in the bus, when you meet your neighbors, very often they don't say anything, but if you say hi to them, they will reply. Compared to most countries in Europe, I've noticed that people usually greet with you. And this is true to such an extent that when my Scandinavian dad said hi to a neighbor that lives next to us, he was shocked. To be fair, he was just a teenager, but it is so uncommon to greet people in Poland that when my dad greeted my neighbor, who is was like 14 years old, he turned around, looked weirdly at my dad and said hi back. This is very interesting and I feel like it's less usual in other countries. Therefore, there's a, the Polish stereotype mentality that Polish people are closed off and very serious. Uncertainty avoidance. Poland has a very high uncertainty avoidance, especially compared to the Danish. I think the reason for this is how much corruption there was in Poland. Now there is way less because of the government removing a lot of the corruption. But Poland used to have an extreme amount of corruption to the point that the government was built on it, similarly to how it is now in Russia. This has left an impact on the Polish mentality. The Polish people have a very high uncertainty avoidance that means they like maintaining a rigid codes of belief and behavior and are usually intolerant of unorthodox behaviors and ideas what does this mean is that polish people like a set amount of rules and they are not a fan of changing the rules and of new unsure ideas being introduced and this seems to be the case even when the existing rules don't work an anecdote for this, when my dad moved with my family from Ireland to Denmark, he was shocked on the amount of pages and text there was in contracts when he was a banker. Because the Polish people hate uncertainty so much and they're not very trustworthy, they had every small detail of what could happen in a business transaction possibly written down. And my dad had to adapt to this when he was working in Poland, since Danish culture usually is way more trusting, which of course has its benefits and its drawbacks. Indulgence. Polish culture is one of restraint. The Polish usually have a tendency to cynicism and pessimism. I think this is a reason for the massive amount of failures of Polish governments, the amount of torment the Polish people have experienced through history, has caused the Polish to have a set mindset of being negative. The Polish see leisure time and taking breaks as something negative and something to be looked down upon. Unlike Germany, for example, who treat leisure time and breaks as a fact of work. Polish people don't even necessarily think that negative motivation is bad. The Polish uh, new capitalist society of hierarchy likes hierarchy so much culturally and mentally that they, en they encourage hierarchy because it gives negative motivation to work harder. Like for example tests and being fired from your job. A private experience of the Polish having a fixed negative mindset is my own experience. One day when I was driving to school and I had to change from a bus to a subway station, there was a homeless drunk guy who asked me for money for a change. 
and I had change on me, so I thought, why not I'll just give it to him. So I took it out of my backpack and gave him the money and he went away. Literally 10 meters after I gave the homeless man money, anonymous police agents went up to me and thought I just bought drugs off him. Because it is so unusual for Polish people to be give money, plus the fact that Polish people presume the negative, the two police officers who were, by the way, dressed as normal, normal people, they just had badges, thought I was buying drugs out of him. So they walked up to me and told me that they want to look in my backpack and they took my backpack, they looked through all this stuff, they didn't find any drugs and they wrote my address, my school address, they would ask me questions to see if I was lying or if I was drunk or whatever and they let me go. I think that experience explains pretty accurately the Polish mentality of indulgence. Long-term orientation. The Polish have a strong concern with establishing the absolute truth. Polish people are normative in their thinking. The Polish exhibit a great respect for traditions and a relatively small propensity to save the future. Like, for example, the Polish politically think more on short-term benefits than long-time benefits compared to Germany and Denmark that plan economic rules that would benefit them only in the next couple of decades. An example of this is Germany investing in Poland through the EU that long term will save them money because the Germans have a mentality of if everyone is richer, everyone benefits. The futuristic neoliberal movement is becoming strong but with the aging population problem arriving in Poland like in most developing countries an old more traditional people will have more of an impact on decisions for quite a time. The liberal philosophy of try your best and be the best version on yourself is not as present in Poland as it is in its western counterparts. The Polish positive motivator is based on being the best instead of try your best, which in my opinion is really destructive since being the best at most things is near to impossible, which means inevitable failure. I have many friends both grown up and in my age with this mentality and it often confuses me since it's lack of practicality. Power distance. Capitalism is built into the Polish mentality. Poland is a hierarchical society. Unlike, for example, Denmark, where people aren't considered better or worse than one another. This means that the Polish people have a set mindset that people belong in a certain place in a hierarchy and it doesn't need any further justification. Centralization in Poland is really popular. People lower in a hierarchy are expected to be done as told and the ideal boss, successful boss in Poland is a benevolent autocrat which truly proves how much Polish people love hierarchy. And also communism in Poland kind of proved to the Polish that a lack of hierarchy doesn't work, further strengthening the concept of built-in power distance, which is a very important and core part of the Polish mentality. Another part of Polish power distance is Polish sexism. The Polish also see a set hierarchy in gender roles. This is slowly changing with the more modern movement, but it's still very clear in Polish culture mentality. Part of this reason is that the Polish have a specific type of Christianism called Catholicism, where they interpret the Bible in a very conservative way compared to, for example, Protestantism in Denmark, where women have pretty much equal rights to men. Confusion. The Polish are confused. 
which often is seen with their annoyance in what people call them. Poland does not like to be called an Eastern country because of their hate to the Russian and the corrupt plebs that they consider them. But they also don't want to be called a Western country because of the beta liberals that are there that don't have any tradition and only focus on progress. Therefore, Poland can never be fulfilled with their identity. The Germans to the West, their biggest trading partner, are way richer and way more developed. And because of that, the Polish are usually in their shade. The Russians to the East have way more influence when it comes to art and culture. Remember when I said that it is important for the Polish to be the best and not the best version of themselves? This is an example of that. The Polish are extremely annoyed that they are not the best at any big factor geopolitically. Especially when the two countries they compete the most with, Germany and Russia, both are winning immensely against them. Poland loves making fun of themselves, but get utterly mad when someone who is not Polish criticizes them. This can be clearly seen in this bit made by this YouTuber. Ugh, being Polish is the worst, seriously. I know, right? I hate Polar sausages, they're so gross. They are, and the government is just totally whack. Yeah, yeah. Poland is terrible! What did you f***ing say?! You can't say uh, that, you're not from uh, here! Uh, yeah. Another thing that is unusual in individual capitalist countries is that Poland looks very negatively on bragging. If you brag about your work, about how you, much you make money, the Polish mentality is very against that. It's similar to the philosophy of Jantelone in Denmark, where you shouldn't say how much you have, you should just prove it by showing how much you work. On a more positive note, the Polish are extremely hardworking people and often feel like their country isn't good enough for them and go out to other countries because they're so competent and educated that they're very looked after jobs for the Polish. The Polish are known to be hardworking, pragmatic, welcoming when introduced to, and trustworthy. The Polish have a big sense of unity and when the Polish unite, they can achieve everything they want. And that is gonna be pretty much it for this video. This video took quite a lot of time since it required a bit more research than other videos. So I would really appreciate if you considered subscribing. It's not that important for me, but it feels good. So if you could subscribe, don't press the bell button. YouTubers usually tell you to press, to press the bell button, but that bell button is there for a reason. The bell button is basically enabling the algorithm to know if you will like a video that I create or not. If you press the bell button, you'll get notifications to every video I produce, even though you might not like every video I make. So don't press the bell button, just press subscribe. And as always, favel, jegnam, and goodbye.